Can I have too many voiceover demos? Hey there, I'm Mark Scott. Thanks for checking out another voiceover tip. I'm always here to give you actionable, practical advice that is going to help you to grow your voiceover business. Want more of it? Check out the Everyday Vopreneur podcast at vopreneur.com or wherever fine podcasts are given away for free. But also make sure you like and subscribe to this channel so you're always going to get notified when new tips are being posted. So here's a question that's been coming up a little bit lately. Can I have too many voiceover demos? Now, obviously, it's possible to have not enough voiceover demos in that if you don't have any, you've got nothing to market with. But is it possible to actually have too many? It's an interesting transition that's happened in the industry over the last number of years where once upon a time, for the most part, you had a commercial demo and you had a narration demo. And those are basically the two demos that you use to market yourself. But as the industry has evolved, we've gotten to a place where now you pretty much need to have a demo for every genre of voiceover that you're interested in working with. And it's understandable because, hey, e-learning reads are not the same as commercial reads. Corporate narration, not the same as animation or video games. So it makes sense that we want to have some more specialized demos for all of the different genres that we want to work in. So the question then becomes, is it possible? Can you get to a point where you have too many? I know voice actors that have maybe three or four demos. I know voice actors that have dozens of demos on their website. The only time I think that you can get into a position where you have too many is if you haven't actually mastered a genre. It's really easy to get shiny new object syndrome when you're in this business. Maybe when you started out, you did start out with a commercial and a narration demo and you've used those for a little while and you've started pursuing some of that kind of work, but then you're like, oh, animation, oh, video games, oh, explainers, I could do that. Oh, e-learning, I should probably check into e-learning. A lot of people are talking about e-learning. Then COVID hits. Oh, everybody's talking about medical narration. I should probably start doing medical narration. And then you start bouncing all over the place, right? It's, it's squirrel. But sometimes that's not always the right answer. So there's a couple things that I want you to think about when it comes to voiceover demos. First and foremost, have you coached in the genre? Spending a lot of money, and look, demos are cheap, thousand, two thousand, three thousand dollars on a demo, spending all that money on a demo before you've actually coached in the genre, probably not a smart investment because you don't even know if you're ready yet. You also don't know if you're going to enjoy it yet or if you can even do it yet. So I definitely think that you need to do coaching in a genre first. Second thing, do you have the ability to truly perform in that genre? So there are things that I've done coaching in, but I don't consider myself to be great at. And so why would I want to invest my time marketing in a genre of voiceover where I'm not going to excel? Wouldn't I much rather take my time and spend it on marketing to genres where I know I'm much more likely to book and much more likely to generate a return on my investment for my demo? That's what you need to be thinking like. So this is one of those instances where you need to be thinking like a VOpreneur as opposed to thinking like a voice actor who just wants to be able to do all of the things. So have you coached? Do you have the ability to do that genre? Can you perform in that genre? And one thing I'd want to add to that too is there's a difference between being able to perform in a genre when you're in a coaching session and being able to perform in a genre when you're being live directed or when you're being self-directed in an actual session, right? Working with a coach, they're going to give you a lot more input on what to do, how to do it. If you're on your own, you're not going to get that same level of feedback. So making sure that you have the ability to perform the genre. The other thing is, do you have the capacity to market to the genre? If you have 14 different demos on your website, do you honestly have the ability to market yourself in 14 different places? And it's an important question to ask because having demos on your website more often than not isn't enough unless you're spending a lot of money on SEO, which by the way is marketing yourself. You can't just put the demos on the website and wait for the work to come. You're going to have to actively put those demos out there make sure that people are finding them, that people are listening to them, that you're getting them in front of decision makers. So do you really have the capacity to market yourself in all of those different directions? So that's something else that you need to think about because spending a lot of money on a demo when you know you're not gonna be able to market yourself or you're not going to have enough time to market yourself adequately, is it really the best investment? Or again, can you get a return by focusing on something else? So have you coached? 
Can you actually perform it with expertise? Do you have the time and the ability to market yourself into the genre? These are all things that you need to be thinking about. You can't be all things to all people, and that's okay. That doesn't mean that you can't explore new genres and that you shouldn't explore new genres, because of course you should. You never know when you might hit one that actually does work for you that maybe you hadn't tried before. But it also means that you need to keep a level of focus. There's a reason why Nike does one thing really well. They just focus on shoes and athletics. They don't do a hundred other different things. They focus on that one genre, that one target demographic of people, of buyers, and they crush it, right? We need to be thinking the same way. Where are the few areas that we can focus in and excel in? That's where we build a business. That's where we make our money. That's how we build up a foundation of clients. And then if you want to play in some of those other genres when opportunities come up, because hey, Every once in a while, you might see an animation opportunity from your agent, or you might see one on a casting site and you want to give it a shot. Nothing wrong with giving it a shot. I'm just saying, before you start spending a whole lot of money on all these different demos, think about it. A dozen demos at 2000 bucks a piece, that's a pretty heavy investment. Is it the best way that you could be spending your money? Start with a few that you know you can do well, and if you want then you start to save money from each one of those demos that you can reinvest back into your business ultimately. That's how you grow over time. That's how you grow strategically. And that's how you make sure that you're getting the most out of your investment.